understand what's so amusing about penises. Hey, remember in Wonder Woman 1984 when Chris Pine's brain stole that random dude's body for the sole purpose of hooking up with an 800-year-old Gal Gadot? And besides the fact that if they can use literal magic to put the best Chris in some stranger instead of bringing his whole body back, imagine how much more messed up this would be if this was done to a woman. Yeah. What you mean. Imagine some overly complicated multiverse scenario where Zack Snyder's pretzels released a Justice League sequel where Lois Lane died. In it, Superman is so horned up for that sweet afternoon delight that he finds a way to bring her back to life in the body of some random innocent BuzzFeed journalist, who he then super plows. <laughs> That feels weird, right? Why is it that movie men are just apparently never worried about whether they can actually consent? They're all just little horny Oliver Twist walking up to any random woman begging, please ma'am, can I have some more sex? Another bowl of sex please, my lady. <coughs> and we don't think twice about it because Oliver is a boy. I mean, if Oliver Twist was like an adult, not a boy, I didn't mean boy, but whatever. Let's do some thought experiments with an Olivia Twist and allow the horror to slowly wash over us. How about Tom Hanks and Big? Sure, the fortune teller box, which is also magical, and biggens everything. Honey? Including Tom's little Hank. But Big Tom's brain doesn't age a millisecond. He's still just a prepubescent little lad in America's favorite boy. Cause nobody doesn't like Tom Hanks! There's a reason there are age of consent laws and not height and weight limit of consent laws. This 12-year-old child basically entraps a grown-ass 20-something independent ass woman into being the next Ghislaine Maxwell. Having trouble seeing this as an issue? Imagine a 12-year-old girl suddenly physically maturing and then going down on Mr. Rogers. I don't think we give that gift very much anymore. Not a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Not beautiful at all. And speaking of, quote, classic statutory rape jokes in movies, Blake Check sends a preteen boy on several dates with a very post-teen CIA agent who he ultimately makes out with. But it's suddenly much more apparent how inappropriate this is if we flip it. Now, a young girl with a lot of money is charmed by an adult man into taking him on several dates while he gathers information on her and also runs with her through water fountains until they're soaking wet. Later, he kisses her full on the mouth and says he'll wait for her. <laughs> Bad day in the neighborhood. Evacuate the neighborhood, folks. But what about Forrest Jenny loving Gump? Without getting all into it, I personally believe it's bad for a woman with AIDS to have sex with a mentally handicapped man who has been obsessed with her for decades, but man, it's a lot worse the other way around. Imagine a dude leading on a neurodivergent childhood friend for years until one night he just sneaks into her room and takes her to Flavortown. <coughs> Speaking of, have you ever noticed that almost all movie love triangles are between two men and one woman? There are very few examples of a man choosing between two mostly equal women. If a man is choosing, it's usually between his harpy evil girlfriend who is objectively hot but also like eats iguanas or some shit, and the exciting manic pixie dream girl who he's known for years but never really like noticed, you know? Now that I say that out loud, I'm not sure which is worse, but one thing is for certain, and it's that society has decidedly chosen men as the pursuers. Even in a scenario with two women fighting over a dude, the male character still ends up pursuing that manic pixie. In a traditional rom-com, the female lead merely succumbs to the pursuits of one of the two mediocre dudes, but you swap genders and suddenly it's an issue. Consider The Notebook. We're back to that. Think about how much you would hate Rachel McAdams' character if her alley was an owl. Even though Al becomes engaged to a perfectly fine, maybe even great woman, a different woman has been obsessing over him and built him an entire freaking house in the hopes it'd bring him back to her somehow. And that's apparently so exciting to Al that he tricks his fiance into letting him go on a pre-wedding trip to Bone Town with some weird clingy woman he hasn't even seen in several years. Tits pervert more like. Societally, we're conditioned to be uncomfortable with women taking charge of their sexuality. Like even though Al is essentially abandoning his fiance, a large section of American society would be even more pissed at the female equivalent of Ryan Gosling for being a homewrecker. Society has created this impossible scenario where men are supposed to pursue in a competitive scenario with comparable men, but they're not allowed to succumb to the call of the WAP. But that's just one movie. Consider other romantic flips, like a man pretending to be a woman to join the girls' soccer team. And not only that, but he bunks with an attractive, often nude woman who he falls in love with in a hypothetical he's the man. Okay then. It is merciful. Or a man trying to emotionally manipulate a woman for a stupid blog article until she leaves him in How to Lose a Girl in 10 Days. The straight rom-com genre survives almost entirely on the protagonist's lack of dingus. I'll never understand what's so amusing about penises.